I bet you didn't know that there's actually a very capable drum voice in your Ornament and Crime module. Bugcrack gives you two drum voices per hemisphere, which you can modulate and change to make everything from booming kicks to crunchy snares and very, very clean hats. One of the nice things about Bugcrack is it's very modulatable, fun to play, and the animations on the screen are great to watch too. In today's video, I'm gonna go through how it works we're going to play around with different tricks to modulate it and get cool sounds out of it. And we're going to build fun drum grooves using Ornament and Crime. So let's get started. So the best way to figure out how to use Bugcrack is to actually get patching with it. So let's set up a pretty straightforward patch to get ourselves familiar with the controls. And I have Bugcrack selected on two ornaments in crime, both of which are running Phaserville. So I have four drum voices per ornament in crime, which gives me eight in total. And I've got eight trickers over here on Stolper Beats. You can adjust the parameters for each voice by turning the controller, and then you select between different voices by turning the parameters. So you go through the parameters for voice number one here, then you go through the parameters for voice number two, and back again. Let's take a look at the first voice, which is a kick. So we'll get it patched up. I'm gonna take a patch out of my uh, Stolper Beats here, pop it into there. Then I'll just patch the output here straight into my uh, cockpit mixer module so we can hear the kick. Make sure I don't max up my levels here. Let's take a look at some of the parameters. One of the things we can do is we can adjust the pitch. So you can pitch tune your kick. And look how the little bug animates as I adjust the pitch value there. It's actually really hard to think of a better way to animate a lot of complex parameters than using some sort of visual indicator. It, rather than putting figures on the screen, you're quickly able to look at the position of that little bug there and know, oh yeah, that kick is tuned down low. Oh no, that kick is tuned up much higher. Punch is very common in kick drum design. It controls a uh, the frequency that you kind of punch up to when you hit the trigger before you drop down to the actual frequency of the kick. And that's what gives kick drums their sort of initial snappy uh, transient. So you actually want a bit of punch. Let's take a listen. If I have no punch, we're just going straight into the sine wave, which is how you create a kick drum. As I turn a punch, you hear now we're getting that little transient spike Drop controls how long it takes to drop from that punch value down to the actual value set. So I had a 45 hertz frequency for that sine wave for the kick. So the drop is gonna control how quickly we come down from that transient from the punch. Let's take a listen. And the bug fills in as I dial up or reduce the drop. And those are the parameters on the kick. Now they can be CV attenuated. So let's take a look. If I select CV attenuation, I can then scroll through again by selecting, you see here, I've selected CV attenuation, it's highlighted. I now turn the controller to choose which of the parameters I want to um, modulate. Now, the best way to modulate something like this is with a clock synced uh, modulation source. So let's use, uh, Mimetic Digitalis here. I'm going to trigger it uh, from the output of Stolper Beats here. So for example, I can modulate the uh, tone or the frequency associated with the kick, and you'll see the little bug moving up and down, and we'll get different sounds for our kick. And this is modulating the decay amount. So now I have this set up in bipolar modulation. Now I can take the output of my mimetic digitalis. I'm gonna patch it into the plus input here. And now I can scale the amount of modulation and also invert it. Basically what you have here is the kick is always on the left channel and the snare or hat, the higher frequency drum is on the right channel. So let's go take a look at what that sounds like now. And I'm gonna patch the uh, trigger here into snare so we actually line it up with what the writing is on Stolper Beats. Okay, we'll hit play and we'll adjust the frequency. So you can go down to 100 hertz 
or wow, all the way up to 700. Let's see what else, the decay. Uh, there's a nice snappy, snap in the snare drum is equivalent to punch for the kick drum. So this creates that initial transient energy. And our bug animates when we adjust it. To create a snare you or any sort of high frequency percussion, you typically take some white noise source and blend it with an oscillator. The blend parameter here on the B channel controls the amount of blend between that noise source in the uh, oscillators on the ornament and crime. So at zero, I can bring it up until it's all the way up to just the white noise. And now we have a little bit of the two mixed in. Again, we can CV modulate. So let's modulate the blend amount because that's actually a really interesting one to listen to changes over time on. I'll take the output of uh, sequencer two here on our uh, Mimetic Digitalis. We'll patch it into the channel two here, again bipolar. And we'll take the output of channel two and we'll patch it into channel B on book crack. Now we get that really big variation. What we can do now is we can actually filter using, in this case, uh, this clone of Blades, which is from TLM Audio, they sent it to me. Uh, it's Cuts is their name for it, but it's basically a Blades clone. And I gotta say, it works really nicely, really nicely uh, as a Blades clone. So I'm gonna patch in these two here into our Blades clone here. And we will just take a single mono out here into say channel three, so. Ooh, yeah. You know, we just have to modulate. We're just gonna have to start modulating things now because this is crying out for some rhythmic modulation. Let's get to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that quick walkthrough of Bug Crack with some patch examples. And I'm gonna finish up today with a couple more patching examples using different modules, just to show you some ideas I came up with when I was playing around with the module. Don't forget to leave me some questions or comments or requests in the comment section down below, as I always try to answer everything that people ask me. Thanks for watching, see you next time.